Hi everybody, Karen Roby here with EdBot for ZDNet. We're talking today about the PC and how it's evolved over uh, the last decade. Ed, you put a great article together here for us uh, for ZDNet and really talking about uh, four ways that things have changed over the last decade. I think a good place to start there would be uh, with the competitive landscape and how that's changed things. Sure, well, you know, this all started, this is a part of ZDNet's big uh, end of the decade package, the sort of the decade in review. And uh, so when I went back to look at the PC, uh, I found, you know, a really curious thing that happened literally at the beginning of the decade in January of 2010, when Steve Jobs came out on stage and held up the very first iPad, the very first time that the world had seen a tablet. And it was a famous writer then, Nicholas Carr, wrote an article uh, declaring that he, uh, he had been at that launch and he declared that the PC had died that day. Um, and the funny thing is 10 years later, the uh, PC isn't dead after all. Uh, the industry is still selling 250 million of them a year. Um, er everyone thought that the rise of tablets and smartphones was going to completely eliminate the need for the PC. But as it turns out, all they're doing is making it possible for us to do different things on different devices at different times. But, uh, you know, so the competitive landscape changed and a lot of the things that you used to have to do with a PC, you no longer have to do. You can do a lot of things on a smartphone or a tablet. So as a result, uh, you had categories of products, uh, one in particular, the netbook, these cheap underpowered PCs typically had an Atom processor in them and not a lot of memory, and they were really slow. Uh, the iPad did a pretty good job of killing off that class of PCs. Um, and as a result, the, the, uh, the PC makers started concentrating on different types of, of personal computers, especially things that were appropriate for business buyers who will pay a premium for productivity and for gamers who will pay a premium for uh, fast refresh rates and you know and good performance, but that's how the competitive landscape changed. The uh, the tablet didn't turn out to be as much of a of a category killer as everyone thought. Yeah, definitely. All right, Ed. And in terms of the PCs, though, uh, you know, talk a little bit about how they've changed. Say from uh, you know one from 2010 to one from today. Well, it, you know, I, it was, uh, I, I was really lucky to find an article that my friends at Laptop Magazine did back in, uh, at the end of 2010, uh, where they, uh, they had reviewed, I think, 140 PCs that year. And uh, they did an article listing their favorite PCs of the year. So it was kind of fascinating to go through that list and then compare it with uh, the PCs that are that are popular and that are going to be on this year's best-selling list. And I found uh, a handful of real distinctions between uh, the PCs of that time and uh, those that are you know, 10 years later. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the ones today are thinner and lighter in ways that you can't even imagine. Now at the time, that was when you know the MacBook Air was still quite new. Uh, in fact, Laptop Magazine called it their breakthrough device of the year. And uh, it was very thin. And by the standards of the time, it was extremely light, about two and a half pounds. Well, these days, of course, uh, you know, most portable PCs that are sold uh, for Windows uh, can come into that those those um, specs pretty easily. You've got a lot of PCs in the two to three pound range these days, but the MacBook Air definitely sort of set the standard for the entire industry uh, to design towards. Uh, one of the biggest changes, uh, you know, the, none of those PCs in 2010 had touch screens and all of them were sort of the conventional clamshell factor. And then what started, what started happening in 2012 with the launch of Windows 8 and then in 2015 with the release of Windows 10 is that touch screens became more and more and more popular and so did categories of two and one devices, these things that can, uh, that you, where you can, you know, take the screen off, take the keyboard off and use it as a tablet, or you can uh, take the screen and flip it around so that it's in, um, you know, so that it's in a, a kiosk mode and you don't have to have the, the keyboard there in front of you. So you had these, these different shapes 
that uh, most Windows PCs come in today, although the Macs are still uh, no touch screens on a, P on a MacBook and, uh, and still no two-in-one type shapes. Uh, solid state storage was very rare back in 2010. Today, it's more or less standard on all but the lowest end devices. Uh, battery life uh, has really improved over the last 10 years. Um, there were, I think there was one device, there was one Lenovo device back then that, that uh, bragged of eight hours battery life. But really at that point, you know, if you could say you could get five hours of battery life in 2010, you were doing really well. Well, in, you know, as we go into 2020, you're starting to see PCs that are routinely getting real world battery usage of 10 to 12 hours uh, and and you're gonna see some designs coming next year that are going to go well beyond that. And then finally, there's the question of ports. I was really struck by a couple of the devices that I saw that where you look on the side of the device and they're just bristling with ports. There was one device that I looked at that had a couple of USB ports. It had a VGA port and an HDMI port and a display port and a full-sized ethernet network connector. And you know that's, first of all, one reason why they had to be so thick, um, but it was also so cluttered and so clunky. And uh, now today, uh, you know, probably the, 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 you know, the final difference and the biggest difference here is that most of the high-end PCs you'll see today have you know, just one or two USB Type-C ports, and those are capable of doing all those things that you used to have to have you know, sort of both sides of the, of the PC uh, filled up with ports. Yeah, quite a bit of change there, uh, Ed, to say the least. Uh, so, you know, that's talking about the hardware, of course. Now, what about the things that we actually do with the PC? Talk about changes there. Well, you know, back in 2010, uh, Office 365 didn't exist yet. Uh, and uh, cloud-based services were sort of around, but they were, they were very, very specialized. They were kind of expensive. Uh, OneDrive was still called SkyDrive back then. And, uh, and so they weren't really mainstream services. Uh, you know, as we head into 2020, uh, the cloud has pretty much become the defining factor of what we do on PCs these days. So, you know, Office 365, uh, you know, you can download your software or you can work online. Uh, G Suite from Google, people are used to collaborating on devices that live in the cloud. Um, Adobe's apps are there. Uh, and the result of all of that is that you don't need quite as much storage in a PC as you used to uh, because you can just access stuff from the cloud when you need it and leave it there when you don't. And so, you know, around the middle of the decade, you started to see PCs that were getting hard drives that had, you know, 300 or 500 gigabytes of storage or even a terabyte. And now you're seeing that, you know, sort of mainstream uh, PCs just have 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of storage. And those are, those are sufficient. You can still get more, but uh, the, it's one of the few times where the specs have actually gone down. In the, in the last 10 years. The other thing that's interesting about what's happened to software is that operating system upgrades during that time have become free. Back in 2010, Apple was still charging, I think $29 a year for uh, an upgrade to OS 10. And over the next couple of years, uh, Microsoft started cutting the price of its upgrades for, you know, for Windows 7 and for Windows 8. So they went down and down, but now, you get a, a PC that has Windows 10 on it and you just get your upgrades free. You know, there's no longer a sense that you have to pay for them. And what that did was it liberated the PC upgrade cycle from being tied to having a new operating system. You know, it used to be there's a new version of Windows out, so it's time to, uh, to go buy a new PC. All right, I definitely remember paying for that, Ed. Okay, and talk uh, as we wrap up here about OEMs and how did they change? You know, they, all of those changes didn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, they, those were sort of gut-wrenching changes for the companies that actually build the PCs. And so, you know, in 2010, when I went back to look at the PCs that were popular then, you had companies like Toshiba and Fujitsu, which are 
no longer in the PC business. They've, they, uh, they exited uh, over the last 10 years. And instead, what you found is that companies, uh, in the three companies in particular, HP, Dell, and Lenovo, have taken over the, the PC market. They, they uh, dominate even more than they did in 2010. The one interesting thing, one really interesting thing that happened there is that there was a single new player who came onto the market and has actually been quite influential, and that's Microsoft. Uh, if you had asked someone in 2010 whether you know, Microsoft would be one of the most influential PC makers in 2020, uh, they'd probably look at you like you were crazy. Um, but, but as it turns out, as we get ready to start a new decade, uh, Microsoft has about a quarter of the share that Apple uh, has, uh, and they're making a billion dollars a quarter on the Microsoft Surface product line. But more importantly than anything else, they're sort of setting the reference design for the, uh, for the entire category. So companies are now looking at what Microsoft is doing in the same way that they used to look at what Apple was doing and they're copying those features or uh, trying to improve on them. So, you know, that's probably, if you get to the end of the decade, probably the biggest change is uh, in, in who people are copying. Yeah, always fun uh, to look back, Ed. Well, we thank you so much for that. And for more on our Decade in Review and Ed's article, make sure you check out ZDNet. Thanks for watching.